Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So this week I'm going to be exploring a new tool from Padlet. It's actually in beta at the moment and it's called Padlet TA. I'm pretty excited because I've been using Padlet for many, many years. So if you're interested in exploring Padlet TA, which stands for Teaching Assistant, then please keep on watching. Okay, I'm really excited about this new launch. I love Padlet as a great collaboration tool, digital learning wall. I use it in all of my workshops and with students as well. And I love all of the AI functionalities that Padlet has introduced. But they've just released Padlet TA in beta. So let me just move myself over to the side. You can see that it gives me the date, the time where I am in my time zones. It's approaching noon and then I can actually select different media. So it could be a link, drive, text, YouTube, or I can upload any of my own files, it looks like. So I'm just gonna go through a few of these that I'm interested in, and they have examples of each type of different apps. So let's have a look at the lesson plan. So I'm gonna click on the lesson plan, and then you can see there's an example. So of course we can put any grade level, the learning objective, any additional content. I can choose a file, Google Drive, add link or add YouTube. I love the interface of this. And at the moment you don't need to log in. It's just available for everybody to have a play around with and give some feedback. So let's have a look at the example. I'm just gonna generate the example here so that we can actually see. Okay, so here's an example, sixth grade. Students will be able to identify the main parts of the cell and their functions. This lesson includes a hands-on activity where students build a cell model using edible materials. That sounds really fun. Differentiation strategies are included for students with varying learning needs. Okay, so let's generate. And a window pops up on the side here. Okay, 50 minute. Here are the lesson objectives. So we're using clear plastic plates. Let me just scroll down. We're using green jello for the cytoplasm. <laughs> Excellent. Small candies and fruits for organelles. So they've got some suggestions, a gummy bear for the nucleus, M&Ms for the mitochondria, licorice pieces, etc. And then let's just have a look. So there's a bit of direct instruction, fine, for 10 minutes. Okay, just looking at some basic vocabulary such as nucleus, mitochondria, etc. And then what's the hands-on activity? That's what I'm interested in. Let's just scroll down. And then it says distribute materials to student groups. Students follow step-by-step -step instructions to create cell models. Place each organelle in appropriate location. Label each part, document model creation. That, that sounds really fun, I think. And then some differentiation strategies. Now, we know that we don't necessarily have visual, kinesthetic, or auditory learners, so that kind of learning theory has been debunked, but certainly for ESL students, we can provide vocabulary cards and pictures, and there's an extension there. I love it. Okay, so let's go back to the homepage and have a look at a little bit more. I'm just gonna move myself over to this side. Presentation, I'm interested to see the presentation. Now, I think by now you probably know my thoughts about generating presentations. I'm very cautious about that. I don't wanna generate presentations that lead to teacher-centered transmission method instruction, where it's really death by PowerPoint or it's encouraging this lecture style method. So let's have a look. I've got C examples, clear field. So let's just see the example because I'm going to start using this when I can see different functions for my own work. So this is an eighth grade example, American Civil War, focus on the key battles and figures of the Civil War, include images and primary sources to engage students. So I might say, create inquiry based learning experiences, okay? Because I want to focus on that. Uh, and then let's just generate, move myself over again, and then a new window pops up. Explore the pivotal battles and influential figures. I can see that it's uh, still thinking and generating. Okay, and so here are the other cards that we have. This is, looks like an outline. Okay, it looks like it's a little bit delivery 
uh, method, but at least as a video, there's an interactive video and we can, you know, at least this is like a foundation, I suppose, and we can then try to edit this so that it is actually more interactive and not so transmission lecture style. Now, if I got, press this export, I can export to Google Slides or PDF, which means that, of course, I can then edit. So this is a great starting point, right? It gives me some information that, of course, as a history teacher or social studies teacher, I would verify, and at least it's a nice start. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's go back. All right, the next one that I'm interested in is the class activity ideas. I'd be using that. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so I'm just going to look at the example again. Is it to do with states of matter? Oh, okay, we're going to have a look at understanding the causes and effects of American uh, Revolution. Sure, let's have a look at that. Focus on the perspectives of both the colonists and British. Okay, so this is index cards. Assign each student a roll card, great. Okay, so give students five minutes to review their character's perspective. Great, okay, I like the interactivity of this. Um, so this is a tea time debate. Then we have tax collection simulation. Then we have revolutionary newspaper. So lots of really great lesson ideas actually that are interactive, I like them. Great, and it gives me some differentiation tips again. Okay, all right, there's a couple of more things that I wanted to explore. So I'm not gonna look at the worksheet. Um, I'm not really into the multiple choice questions, but I actually like to randomly group uh, either adults or students. And so here's a smart group uh, little app here, and I'm gonna see an example. Okay, so you can put the list of names and then here they have some suggestions on what kind of leader they are or whether they're focused, organized. And then I can say the number of groups I'm gonna uh, change this to five groups. I don't know how many there are, so hopefully there's a multiple of five. Try to balance the groups out with different personalities. Put Harper and Layla in the same group. Do not put Elfie and Amara in the same group. This is cool. So you wouldn't be showing students that you're doing this because you want it to be random. Okay, you want them to know that there's a random generator. Okay, and I, and I can see I've come up with an error. So let me just change this back to two in case it wasn't a multiple of five. I haven't counted how many names there are, but let's just keep it at the original example. This is just an example, uh, by the way. So, okay, so they're the two. Okay, and they've given a name here as well. Okay, you can regenerate it as well. I wouldn't necessarily show this to students because I don't want them to know that I haven't put Harper and Layla in the same group, but uh, I do like to form uh, random groups. All right. Now, the other thing that I'm really interested in is not necessarily the name picker. That would only be if I was giving um, a, a book prize out in a workshop. So I wouldn't actually be picking students out individually. Um, let's have a look at the rubric. Okay, so we'll look at the rubric example. And this is year three. Okay, uh, they'll create a master of poster showcasing each state of matter. Sure, let's have a look at that. Oh, okay, so I can't press that example. Let's just go to that example here then, loading the example. So this is a persuasive essay arguing for and against the implementation of a four-day school week. Okay, all right, so what have we got? Okay, so we've got the rubric, advanced proficient developing needs improvement. Okay, so we've got argument and thesis. We've got evidence and support, analysis and reasoning, organization and structure, clarity and convention. I can copy the text or I can export it to Google Docs or PDF. Wow, this is fantastic. Okay, so I've just explored just a few of these little apps. And remember, this is in beta version. I'm pretty excited because it's quite nice to have this dashboard of all of the tools that a teacher may use. And I suppose that's why Padlet's decided to call it uh, Teaching Assistant. But I'm really excited. So well done again, Padlet. I love the Padlet wall. I've been using that and the different versions of the walls for years. I love how we can promote collaboration and really deep critical thinking, metacognition. And now you're providing a tool that will give us, will give teachers some apps that we can just readily use. 
I think the only suggestion I have, of course, eventually is that we need to have folders with our work, right? Maybe it would be folders of um, for the grade levels that we teach or the subjects that we teach, like we need to reorganize this so that it's not just this um, huge panel. But well, well done so far. So thank you so much for joining me this week and I hope to see you next time.